If you're watching Swipe, here's what we've got for you in the next 10 minutes. Thomas meets the eight-year-old who might just be Britain's answer to Bill Gates. I can interconnect the computers. I play games on the computers. I do mathematics on the computers. Meanwhile, I go on board the bus touring schools to offer a bit of techspiration. Hello, everyone. Hello, <laughs> And we're taking back control from the evil Heartless in our Games Review. Welcome to Swipe. If you're a regular viewer, you'll know we often look at technology that's trying to help children get into computing. But let's face it, some of those children are already there with bells on. This week, Thomas has been to see what a typical day is like when you're the world's youngest Microsoft certified professional. He'll explain what that means. Music had Mozart and painting had Picasso. Now computing has its own child prodigy. Ian Qureshi spends his day like any other child his age. French verbs, PE lessons and learning about that old favourite ancient Egypt. But it's when he gets home that his true talent surfaces. I was roughly about the age of three when I started to explore the hardware of the computers. And the hardware is like the parts you can touch, like the keyboard, the monitor and all that. I can install and configure the operating system of the computers. I can transfer the data from one computer to another. I can interconnect the computers. I play games on the computers. I do mathematics on the computers. And I can test the physical connectivity uh, between computers. At just five years old, he passed a prestigious exam, making him the youngest ever Microsoft certified professional. He's even built from scratch his very own computer lab. I passed a computer exam at Birmingham City University. It was a Microsoft exam with many different types of questions. Uh, I can't remember the exact number of questions, but there were quite a few. Ian's skills on a desktop mean he's become quite popular with his teachers. He can teach us a few things. Uh, he knows how to, you know, any, any problems with a computer. Uh, Ian's your to-go person, um, which is obviously very useful. It's clear Ian is an exceptional computer scientist, but as demand for people with his kind of skills grows, are we doing enough to let them flourish? Jill runs out-of-school camps for kids wanting to learn a range of digital skills, coding, computing. She says schools don't currently allow students with an aptitude for IT to blossom. There's a huge digital skills gap in every country, in the US, in the UK, in Europe. Uh, in no countries are we able to um, provide as many people who have the, d the digital and technology skills as the economy is going to require. So if we want to keep that value, if we want to keep that creative uh, piece of that value, and if we want to be able to deliver all the different innovations that we need for our economies, especially here in Europe, we have to develop that talent and we have to create um, the opportunities for kids to develop that talent. But for now, we await great things from Ian. He's dreaming big. I want to be an IT entrepreneur in the future and I would also like to set up an eValley in the UK and eValley will be the biggest technology hub of the UK. Watch this space. Thomas Newton, Sky News. In a moment, we'll be on the bus letting students test drive EdTech. That's education tech, by the way. It's coming right up after a roundup of this week's tech news. Airbus wants...